Hi, I'm Tam France from Netflix is Queer Eye, and although Anthony is the chef on our show, I actually do some cooking too. Today I am making taka dal. The translation for dal is simply lentils. My family makes it with taka, which is butter and garlic. You start by preparing your lentils. You're going to want to wash your lentils thoroughly, and side note, all grains need to be washed before you use them. Rinse and rinse and rinse until that water runs clean. You add your lentils to boiling water, one part lentils to three parts water. Bring to a boil until you'll see foam appear on the top. Scrape off that foam, dump that out, then reduce down to a simmer and then add your spices. My family makes a much thicker version of standard dal. We like condensed meals, we like ready rich flavors and that usually comes down to reducing down our Indian food or our Pakistani food. Mix completely and simmer for around about 45 minutes total. Every 10 to 15 minutes you're gonna mix the dal. The reason why you're mixing every 10 to 15 minutes is to make sure nothing is sticking to the base of the pan. The lentils should be fully cooked. All you're gonna do is reduce down the water to your desired consistency. I like a relatively thick dal, and so I'll just reduce down to the point where it's almost a runny paste. For the taka, you add your butter to a pan, a full bulb of garlic. Melt the butter completely and then leave on high heat until the garlic resembles my skin tone. Once your taka is complete, add it directly to the lentil mixture, mix in completely, and then finally add cumin powder, a handful of chopped coriander, which you may also know as cilantro, and your dal is complete. With dal, you can have it with rice or roti, which is Pakistani flatbread or naan. The way I describe the flavor of dal is creamy and rich with just a kick of spice. If I were to have dinner with three famous people, actually, I'm pretending like I don't know, I know the answer all too well. It would be Adele, Michelle Obama, and Beyonce, the trifecta. My worst haircut that I've ever had, I thought was my Justin Bieber haircut, but it's not. It's actually what I call Utah hair. That's no shade to you guys in Utah. You know I love you, I live there. But because I know Utah, I know what a very typical hairstyle is for a 40 plus lady and that is spiked at the back, swoosh at the front. It's not really sexy on anyone, but as a late teen, I thought that that was my hair and that was my story. And so I made it my story for about two years. Um, I didn't understand why I wasn't dating in high school. Uh, now as an adult, oh, I know. My favorite fish, oh, to look at is a goldfish. To eat is haddock. I've never done karaoke, but if I were to, it would be a duet. Um, the song would be Tell Him by Celine Dion and Barbara Streisand. I would be Celine, Ovs. If you asked me five years ago, I would have said probably the 40s. And if you asked me in five years, I'm sure I'll find a different decade. Right now, 70s. I met my husband, Rob, online. It was 11 years ago on a site called Connection, which is no longer a thing. Uh, Connection was like gay Facebook. There was nothing inappropriate ever sent, God forbid. It wasn't that kind of site. It's not what the apps are now, believe me. It was, it was a more innocent time. I have no tattoos. I do do temporary henna tattoos. You'll see me a lot of the time with a henna tattoo. Uh, I have no desire to get a permanent one. I can't find a fashion trend that I can commit to for the rest of my life, I definitely can't find a tattoo that I might want for the rest of my life. For men, was like the corsets that used to wear in the 1800s um, with the really overblown shoulders, um, I thought looked incredible. I mean, not for regular life, obviously not to go down to the, the store for a pint of milk, uh, but just for editorial, I think it's gorgeous. I like my cookies warm, soft, um, preferably just like a simple uh, uh, chocolate chip, or I do like a chocolate with chocolate chip and peanut butter chips. I think that's heaven. Pakistani culture, it's quite, quite honestly, archaic, where women cook and men eat. Um, but I was so curious that my mom started teaching me how to make 
our food when I was seven or eight, and then by the age of 13, I could make a full feast for 30 or 40 extended family members completely from scratch. All Pakistani food, all Indian food, and it was incredible. And I've been cooking ever since. So good.